going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And today, we'll take a peek over here at the Bitcoin price chart and the altcoin market like we typically do. But I'm going to try to keep it kind of light, tight, and bright today. As many of you know, it's April Fool's Day. I don't <laughs> I don't ever mess with you guys on April Fool's Day. There's going to be plenty of it out there. There'll be plenty of fake news stories out there and people get tricked left and right. But I will not mess with you. <laughs> But just be wary out there that a lot of the stuff that you see might not be entirely true and be on your guard today. As for the price action over here in the cryptocurrency market, a little bit of a mixed day here. Bitcoin relatively flat. It's down $38 for the day. As I'm recording, that will probably change by the time the video is done. And we'll see where we're at at the end of the video. But kind of drew out a little bit of what I'm thinking over here for Bitcoin. As you guys know, I've shown the inverse price chart. I've shown the slow and grueling retrace styles multiple times. But like that's just kind of like my thought process on how things will play out. <laughs> I know it looks like a lot of squigglies, but you know, and kind of showing a period of time taking quite a while working through a parallel channel. Still, you know, as we see, it got rejected from the 200 day moving average in there. You know, this scenario would require a break above the 200 day moving average. So hopefully we do see that kind of visualizing the moving average moving along here, providing some support in there and just kind of dragging out for quite a while. But of course, as you guys know, my thoughts are way more optimistic with the altcoin market. But when we're looking at Bitcoin, right, the thing is, okay, we're seeing a rejection happening here at the 200 day moving average. So you go back through history and you say, all right, what happened in the bear market of 2018? That 200 day moving average was a big problem in here and sent Bitcoin tumbling way lower, right? So it's showing the first signs of being a problem in here right now. But you know, can we take a look under the hood? Again, I'm not a on-chain analyst. I'm literally always only looking at two different things. And I'll continue to show you just those two simple things. And I'll probably need to get this guy back on the show at some point. But Alpha Beta Soup with TXMC is the place to go for extreme in-depth on-chain analysis. And he looks at a whole lot more than just on-chain. But that's the place to go for like real on-chain analysis when you want to look at like a ton of different metrics. But for me, I stick to two of them. One of them is exchange outflows and inflows for Bitcoin. You can see outflows are just flying. So Bitcoin is getting pulled off of exchanges. If we were seeing Bitcoin flying on to exchanges right here, selling into that 200 day moving average, uh, that would be pretty worrisome, right? Like we saw back here in the top, back in you know October and November, we saw Bitcoin flying onto exchanges to get sold at the top. Boom, price fell and then boom, Retail investors bring it in and capitulate at the bottom. But what we saw in both circumstances is before the big crash came, Bitcoin was already flying onto exchanges. And as this top came in, Bitcoin was already flying onto exchanges. So we're seeing resistance here at this 200 day moving average, right? But we don't have Bitcoin flying onto exchanges. It is getting pulled off of exchanges. So that's a good thing. You don't want to see a bunch of people pouring their Bitcoin onto exchanges to dump it at the 200 day moving average. We're seeing the exact opposite of that we're seeing still bitcoin coming off the exchanges in addition looking at the addresses with greater than one bitcoin we could see that before capitulation came in here back in 2018 the addresses with greater than one bitcoin were dumping before the capitulation happened same thing also happened in here at the top back in early 2021 addresses greater than one bitcoin were dumping before the capitulation started in here and what do we have the exact opposite we see them accumulating and still rising into this moment so we hit the 200 day moving average no worry to them still continuing to rise even with the dip still continuing to rise so seeing this going on over here that's optimistic for bitcoin seeing bitcoin flying off the exchanges that's positive as well you don't want to see it going on to the exchanges for sure and we see it going off at an even more rapid pace so Yep, that 200 day moving average has been a problem. The top of the channel has been a problem. But under the hood, for those two particular metrics, no big deal yet. Probably notice I have a couple of lines sitting here on the screen. Nothing too big here, just kind of showing where the daily candles closed right in here and then down below, kind of where weekly candles were at. So we saw the weekly candles close and hold here. And then we saw the weekly candles close and unable to break through in here. So just kind of an idea of where daily support is at and where weekly support is at in here. But in the end, until proven otherwise, still just sticking with my thought process. This thing's going to move slow. 
like I've shown in here many, many times. So we'll get that off there, get that off there, and then you can see. But again, at the beginning, I said I would keep things light, tight, and bright. And I know not everybody loves hearing that. But again, things are looking okay for Bitcoin underneath the hood, right? With exchange flows going off the exchanges and addresses greater than one Bitcoin still just continuing to surge. So those are good things for Bitcoin. But throughout the weekend, the thing I'm going to be keeping my eyes on and I'm kind of on my toes about is to see, can we get other altcoins to follow in the footsteps of what Zillica has done and how Ethereum Classic has had a pop to the upside as well? These are the things that we saw happen in 2017 with these precise same setups in here. And the fact that we've had one do it already is optimistic. And so I'll be watching for this throughout the whole weekend, looking for other ones. And I'm sure if you're on Twitter, you could tag me, say, oh my gosh, this one's doing it too. But that's what we're looking for right now. We have one leader. We need more than one leader. We need several of them. Once several of them start to show up, that's when the FOMO really starts to kick in. And like I've said time and time again, when those things happened in 2017, they were happening and topping into the retracement of Bitcoin. So we have the conditions for Bitcoin in place for that to happen. And we're just kind of sitting back patiently waiting to see more of them start to go. And with the market kind of paused out today, you know, I'm going to keep the video relatively brief. It's, you know, I don't want to repeat myself too much from what I typically say, right? You know, Bitcoin's in a retracement, waiting for the altcoins to take off. The thing I always like to point to, of course, is, you know, this chart right here. These are the top 20 coins from back in 2018 historically this market always acts the same and that everything has a tendency to rise up together at the exact same time we can all argue over there on twitter you know i know there's been a lot of drama over there on twitter i've stayed out of it i haven't talked about any of it right but the market has a tendency to move together look at the top 20 coins from back in 2018 look at how many of these look identically exactly the same the market's doing the exact same thing we see these things starting to curl up right in here. And, you know, as we head into the weekend, it's it's the same messaging, right? Bitcoin's in a retracement. Bitcoin's slowly grinding sideways. But we're starting to see a couple of the altcoins start to take off. And the name of the game is going to be patience throughout the weekend. But things are starting to look optimistic as we start to see these things have the same setup as Zillica has, as Ethereum Classic, and that these pop-outs can begin to happen. And usually they don't happen all at once. Usually they happen one by one in the beginning, and then finally things start to all move together. And with all these same setups sitting here throughout the market right now, and we go into the weekend waiting to see if we can get some more of them to happen, you know, of course, it's a lot of the same repetitive messaging, right? When I started this video, I was kind of like, hmm, what do I say different today <laughs> that I haven't said all week? It's kind of one of those days and if you want to kind of insight into a content creator, sometimes you just kind of have those days where there's not a whole lot different to say, but you want to come in and be positive and, um, you know, and I don't want to leave you guys hanging throughout the weekend and just not drop a video on a Friday. I want to wish you all a wonderful weekend. And I want to show you the things I'm looking for as we go into the weekend. And I know there was a ton of drama over there on Twitter. Forget all that stuff, man. That's just what people do, man, during these times right now. And Hopefully, you know, that sentiment swing and everybody kind of arguing with each other and getting offended by things so easily over there, you know, that kind of disappears when when markets turn back up. And I'm hoping and I'm praying over here that we can get some type of positive price action to come in throughout the weekend, at least get a couple of these things popping out in here in the altcoin market to at least restore some of those good feelings that we have in crypto. And I know how up and down these things are. I've been through so many of these cycles in here to know we have the exact same repetitive psychological behavior where there's a lot of fighting, a lot of toxicity. And then we go back into everybody's hooting and hollering. We're singing Kumbaya. We're all holding hands, laser eyes, diamond hands, and we're going to the moon. Those times, you know, it's just over and over, back and forth of what we have. And the infighting always happens during time periods of a lot of negative price action, especially prolonged negative price action. And right now, it is just a waiting game right now for for things to start getting to move, but I'm optimistic on it. You know, I know not a lot of people like my whole scenario that I have drawn out here of where Bitcoin just kind of goes slide sideways and grueling and grinding in there. But that scenario is what the thing that points to optimism in the altcoin market. And so it's it keeps continuing to do this thing. That's great, you know. And we haven't gotten back to the retracement yet. So it's not like it's this time to panic. And we're seeing that early sign like in Zilliqa and Ethereum Classic. And of course we need a whole lot more, but that's what I'm looking for going into the weekend. And I'm optimistic that those times are going to come soon. And I think that this data that we see over here on the on-chain data indicates that, you know what, this market is not ready to just go dumping on itself. That's not what this stuff points to. That's not what this points to. This thing is surging in people taking taking stuff off exchanges. So having to be a little patient, but hey, underneath the hood, everything's still looking okay. On that note, 
I'm going to wrap this thing up. I'm getting this thing out late. This thing's only 10 minutes long. I struggled today, man. I'll just be open with you. This was Sergeant Struggle Day. Yesterday, the whole day, I thought it was Friday. Over and over again, I thought yesterday was Friday. And I kept like texting people. I'm like, I cannot believe today is not Friday. How is today not Friday? Why does it feel like Friday? And then here we are on Friday. I, I think my brain just like, it turned off yesterday or something. <laughs> I don't know. But I absolutely want to wish you a wonderful weekend. I hope that you're doing okay out there. I want to thank you so much for watching my channel. Today is the last day of Ripple Week over there at Link2, where they're giving back $500 and Link2 bucks for every investment into Ripple and one entry into a raffle for a $10,000 vacation. So for those who are looking to purchase Ripple shares and the company Ripple prior to them IPOing, you can get those at Link2. They are a partner of my channel, and there's a link to them in the description of each video. Otherwise, I wish you a wonderful weekend. On that note, I'll wrap it up. If you're looking for something to do throughout the weekend, of course, you could check out my website over here, bcbacker.com. I did add the market update yesterday for March 31st. If you're unfamiliar with this course, it's a course where I deep dive into the previous Bitcoin bull runs and the previous altcoin market cycles, tying them all together to show how the cryptocurrency market has worked in the past. I talk about my personal exit plans in here, and I teach you how to set up your own charts and your own indicators within TradingView and CoinTrader Pro. You can check out all of this educational content over here on bcbacker.com. You can follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. And I want to thank you so much for watching my channel. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick-me-up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one. Okay, it's Friday for real. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everyone.